Okay, so this discussion is about battery charging and discharging. Uh, so let's get straight into that. All right, this is a battery. We all know batteries hold and store power. We all know that to charge this battery, you need a charge controller, one that will prevent it from overcharging and one that will charge it at a slow and steady rate so that it don't get hot. Heat kills batteries. Okay. Now, if you take this battery and you hook it to a cell phone or a small motor, it will discharge it slowly. It'll never get real hot or maybe a little warm. It'll discharge slowly until it's totally dead. All right. Obviously, you don't want it to go totally dead, so you put a, a little protection circuit in there so that once the battery reaches its minimum safe discharge level then it will shut off whatever you're running right okay we, we all agree on that okay so here's the problem when you put these batteries into a big battery pack and then tie it to the grid you're not discharging these at a slow safe rate it is no different then plugging this battery into the largest motor you can find that it will run, even if it only runs for a minute, suck all the power out. Even if it does shut off once it hits its minimum safe discharge, you're sucking that power down really, really quick. The battery is going to heat up really, really fast. What do you think is going to happen to your battery? How many times do you think you're going to get away with discharging the battery in that manner? Not very many times, right? All right, so when you're doing that with your grid tie inverters, because that's exactly what you're doing, that grid tie, you're setting up a 24 volt grid tie inverter that's designed to maximize and convert every single last ounce of electrons that are stored in this into AC and shove it into the grid. Actually, it's not even being pushed into the grid. It's actually being sucked into the grid because the grid is no different than the biggest, giantest motor you can possibly ever find. It's literally every single TV, every single coffee pot, every single light uh, within probably a mile's radius of your house that is sucking every last bit of that 2000 watt power inverter that you're using or greater that you're using so it will discharge that big power pack of yours very very quickly and it, that's exactly why a lot of these guys on these videos that made their own Tesla battery pack wall were asking questions on their videos why is my power inverter getting so hot why is it shutting off is this is this right why is it shutting off and having to cool now that's because it's sucking all the power from the battery pack because the battery pack can actually deliver it okay if it was hooked directly to a solar panel a solar panel can only produce X amount of electrons which means the uh, power inverter can only convert that amount of electricity right? so whenever you're setting up a power inverter you want it to be just above what your solar panels are capable of producing the reason for this is so that your power inverter does not work full on max okay when your power inverter works full on max, it gets very hot, becomes very inefficient, and burns up components. That's why they tell you in all of these grid tie inverters, don't hook it to a battery pack. Okay, Some of them say battery pack, uh, you can hook it to a battery pack, but you need a DC to DC converter to limit the power going into your power inverter. Well. It limits it by allowing it to discharge a smaller portion at a time and then 
allow that to cool down and then start again. Allow that to cool down and then start again. All right, which takes a lot longer to discharge the batteries. It's a little better, but that's still no different than taking a solid piece of metal, shorting the battery out, and letting it go. Shorting the battery out and letting it go until it discharges down to its minimum safe level. How many times do you think you're going to get away with that? All right. So these guys, they put it on there and they run it for several hours. That uh, power inverter gets baking hot, uh, shuts itself off, the fans are running and everything else, and it's bad. <coughs> bad for your power inverter, bad for your batteries. And if you're using junk half-life batteries like these, yeah, your system's not going to last. So you're going to spend uh, $300 on a bunch of junk batteries, maybe $600, uh, uh, $700 on premium batteries, and wind up destroying 50% of their life value and losing so much power. Okay. Ah, that's that's another little topic there. Uh, when these guys give you the calculations on how much m power they're getting, they're telling you the total amount of battery power in their system, and then they're telling you how much power their power converter can convert, and then how much is getting put into the grid, right? And they say, they say okay, we calculated it out. Uh, you'll break even within seven years. That's not true. Absolutely not true. First of all, charging the batteries, the, d just in the charging alone, there are losses. So you're going to lose probably 10 to 20 percent of the electricity used to charge this bank. You don't get one to one. It don't happen that way. Sorry. Okay. Next, you're going to lose on the discharge, not only in the, the battery as it drains warming up and losing electricity right at the battery. You're going to lose it straight there first as it discharged. You're going to lose a certain amount that's pretty negligible in the wire between the battery and your power inverter. Then you're going to lose a probably an additional 20% of the power coming from this battery in the conversion from DC to AC. And then once that AC power inverter, or converter, excuse me, heats up, you're losing more like 30 to 40%. Now they're saying 90% efficiency, but only if you're working within the proper range, meaning that that little fan in there hasn't needed to turn on, and the outside of that case is not baking hot. <laughs> okay, but once you get beyond that, and that fan kicks on, and that outer shell of your power inverter gets hot, you're losing close to 30 to 40% of your power. Now, you're also going to lose uh, some power between it and your meter, okay? Because there's going to be a distance of wire. Now, AC does transmit further and, and uh, fur further away and e more easily because of its nature, and you won't lose anything there, but you're going to lose some of it uh, regardless between your power inverter and your meter. So there's a lot of losses that they're not calculating when they're factoring in how much they're going to save. Now, again, with this battery being charged and then sucked dry very fast, you're losing half of its life by over discharging or too fast discharge. All right, by discharging this too fast, you're damaging it every single time. You're only going to get half your life span. Some of you might get a little lucky, and it'll last a little bit longer. But you're going to be popping batteries right and left. I see these guys, they're pulling it apart. Oh, yeah, I, I, I popped a battery, or uh, I had a bad battery. 
Well, no wonder. They're sucking it dry immediately, trying to max out the amount of power they're putting into the grid. You just can't do that. All right. So if you do the math, factoring in your losses due to heat and transmission, <laughs> okay, here, here's a good one. They say, okay, you got a, a X amount of power coming from your solar panel. So they factor that in as a cost. But that's not what being put into the battery. It goes through a charge controller that drops the voltages way down and the, amp and the charging amps way down. So you're not actually using all of that solar panel to charge your battery. A lot of that's just flat wasted. Okay, unless it's going directly into the grid and that little bit is charging. That's perfectly fine. You can do that. You run your solar panel into the grid, you put a charge controller to charge up the batteries. But to discharge your batteries into the grid is an extremely stupid, inefficient method of recouping the potential of this battery. Okay, Because of all the losses involved, and because of the fact that this battery is going to be damaged due to being sucked dry so quickly. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to properly use a battery bank as opposed to dumping it into the grid. You're, it'll save you money. You will double your efficiency rate and get probably your actual 90% conversion rate from what you put in to what you take out as opposed to only an actual 40 to 50% conversion rate because they didn't do their math right. Alright, till next time.